Hello everyone. So today let us get our uh, hands dirty and uh, I thought I'll probably make some updates to my previous videos, my script runner videos. Not really an update but uh, some kind of uh, a refresher, update, whatever you want to call it. But I want to uh, look back at my scripts that I wrote and I shared with all of you, not only all of them, but uh, some of them. And I thought I'll probably uh, also take a look at some new features that we have in uh, script runner for Jira. So in case you don't know, I have uh, hundreds of videos on uh, script runner for Jira, both on server and cloud. And I was looking at my playlist and uh, one of my biggest challenge, which is actually a good, good challenge is to organize my content uh, in a way so that you can uh, consume it easily and you are able to search for it. And that is why I have this uh, website, ravisaga.in, where you can find a lot of, I mean, not a lot, but all of my videos. And the way I work is I try to organize my videos uh, using uh, this particular course or courses. So all my script now for Jira videos, content is listed here. Now, I was looking at the list here and uh, I thought I'll prob probably uh, do something very simple to begin with. And today I thought I'll probably just uh, uh, write a script that will fetch the issue details. Now I do have similar scripts in my playlist. And of course I do have a repository where I have these scripts. But for, for those people who are new to script runner for Jira, especially on server data center and they are trying to learn it, I guess, uh, these new videos will help you. So um, I, I'm back to creating videos, coding videos on uh, Scriptner for Jira. Now today, let us take a look at uh, Scriptner. And what I will do is I will uh, simply uh, write a script to fetch an issue detail. Now this is the issue which I have. And this is, a, this is like one of the most common thing that you will do when you're working with Scriptner, you will be fetching an issue. Now, when you fetch an issue, you will then be uh, able to do a lot of things with it. Maybe you want to fetch the issue and then uh, uh, maybe update it. Maybe you want to dump it somewhere else. Maybe you want to integrate Jira with other tools. So fetching an issue is uh, very simple, but at the same time, it is important that you know how to do it. Now, talking about Scriptner, so Scriptner, of course, you know, there, to be honest, uh, there are a lot of updates to Scriptner, but if I talk about uh, the visual difference or feature wise, I'm trying to explore and trying to check uh, what all new features I have uh, in my latest uh, script runner. I'll, I'll first start by look, looking at the version. And I believe I have version which is 6. Point, uh, it is version 6.50. So 6.50.0. So this is the version that I'm using in case you're wondering and uh, in case you are trying to understand if this script will work in your case or not. Now, the main difference that I can straight away say is the editor. So this editor definitely looks uh, different. And uh, uh, there are definitely, I believe some improvements as compared to the old editor that we are all used to. Uh, because in the old editor, you had, I think, uh, we had to press control space to get these uh, auto completes. And now it is very simple. Now, if, for example, if I have to do something uh, here, I'm not really sure if this will work with uh, all the APIs, but I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to understand, and I will, of course, share it with everyone. Now, the way I prefer working with script runner is I, I try to use IntelliJ because uh, it will make me super fast. And when you're using IntelliJ, and when you have done this setup of uh, your Jira instance with your uh, IntelliJ, then you can actually save your scripts uh, somewhere else and then uh, refer to them. For example, I have a script here, which is uh, going to simply fetch the issue details. And uh, for this particular example, I will be using this uh, demo one, which is the issue key here. And uh, to run the script, I, I, I just need to refer the script name here, which is uh, get issue. That is it. Now, if I run this, it will of course run and it will uh, give me the uh, issue key, but we, we, we want to do a bit more. Now, if you look at the script, this is the bare minimum script that you need to write uh, to fetch uh, the issue or 
issue details. And in this particular in this particular script, we have two import statements. So basically, we are using component accessor that will be used uh, uh, quite a lot. I mean, you will be using component accessor all the time. And because we have to work with the issue, we are using issue manager. Now, in case you're new to Groovy or in case you're new to Java, don't worry. My my recommendation would be to not worry too much about these things. I mean, uh, the way you can easily learn quick uh, and and quickly learn a script now is to copy and paste the script that you have found somewhere and then play with it. And again, try to do something simple first and then move on to uh, doing some complex things. Now, in this example, what we want to do is uh, we want to play with what we can fetch from the issue. Now, let us say you want to return the issue, uh, maybe the issue key or maybe the summary or uh, or other fields. So today we'll, ta we'll take a look at uh, system fields, some of the system fields. So you can do something like return. And then if you type here issue, and by the way, because I have IntelliJ um, and my IntelliJ is connected to my Jira source code, which you need to configure. And by the way, I have uh, shown this how to do it. So you will get these uh, autocomplete, uh, these suggestions from IntelliJ. This is really convenient and, and it will make you super fast. So if you run this, it will basically uh, give you the same result. It will give you demo one, which is the issue key, nothing else. But we can do more. And uh, we can do more here by simply uh, doing something like dot. And the first thing that you may want to return or fetch is the, let us say the summary. So you can do something like summary. And by the way, there are, you know, like these are like methods that you can uh, use, like get summary or just do summary. Summary will also work. So if you do summary, it will then uh, fetch the summary here. Like this is your first task. And by the way, and uh, this is the summary that I'm right now looking at. I'm fetching programmatically. For example, if I change it, this is the changed summary. So it will basically give us the same new summary that we just uh, modified. Now, of course, we want to fetch more details and uh, we want to maybe fetch the assignee name or the status name. Now, when you're working with uh, Groovy, what you can also do is, I will probably make sure that I that you're able to see me. So when you're working with Groovy, you can do few things, simple things. Now, of course, I'm doing return here, but you can also dump it to your log, your uh, you, you're, you know, there is a second tab here where you can actually dump a lot of things so that you can see how your script is behaving. Return statement is something that we are doing just for uh, this particular example. Now, if you want to maybe return uh, multiple things, what you can do is you can also use something like this. Uh, first of all, you don't have to return something dynamically. You can do something like uh, this is the issue and if you go back to your script and run this it will basically return whatever you have like whatever you have uh, written in your return statement now what i want to do is i want to basically make sure that uh, i have here uh, the summary now when you have to return something within your string and and of course we are talking about uh, groovy here you can do something like like dollar and then uh, in your curly braces you can type here issue which is the variable that we have and then dot summary so basically it will be within your text so we are going to basically look we are, we are basically looking at the same thing but uh, in a slightly different format because we want to return or we want to fetch multiple items in the same return statement so i can type here summary and if i go back and if i type here or run the script it will actually give us the summary now let us fetch uh, something else and uh, maybe I want to fetch here. What what else should I try to fetch? Let me try to bring this uh, code window here, so we can we can see what we are doing, or maybe not. I'll just move it back to the second uh, desktop. Okay. So apart from summary, let us also try to fetch uh, the um, assignee. Simple thing, right? But uh, makes sense because we all want to work with assignees. So you can basically use the same thing here, like same uh, same return statement and use comma. So assignee and uh, again do the same thing, 
dollar not pound issue dot assignee right so this is great now if i go back and if i run this it will give me most likely null because uh, there is no assignee on my issue which makes sense but if i assign it to someone maybe i assign, I, i'll assign it to myself i can see that this issue is assigned to an, to, to 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 a user and uh, if i now run the same script it will give us the user now this format is going to work fine but maybe you want to just fetch the name so the good thing about this particular statement is that it will give you because if you're using uh, here intellij it will make it very easy and uh, it will actually give you all the all the things that you can fetch for that particular user because when you do issue dot assignee you're now working with the uh, with, with the user now for this particular user you can also fetch uh, as, as you can see you can fetch the name or username let me just fetch the display name right because that is all uh, that is all i want to fetch and if i now look at this it is now giving me assignee is equal to admin this is this is again great but uh, what if if you don't have this issue assigned to anyone what happen in that case will you get any any name let us do that let us unassign it, assign the issue and if i go back and uh, or maybe i'll just run the script first the script will fail now the script is failing and uh, when you're working with groovy always look at the error message because error messages are always going to tell you what is wrong now the error me message here says that null pointer exception very important null pointer exception means that uh, this script is trying to fetch something which doesn't really exist and uh, it is of course going to tell you that uh, uh, we cannot get the property display name on a on a, on a null object so basically if uh, the assignee is null then there is no display name right and that is why this script is going to fail now in groovy there is a way to fix it and we are basically doing some kind of error handling here if you do here question mark it it it, it is basically saying that uh, if if issue assignee is uh, null then uh, di then then simply return null don't uh, break my script and if you run the same thing again it will of course give you null so it's like uh, doing a bit of error handling which is always convenient and you should do it and uh, maybe i'll assign the issue to something maybe myself because i just have one user if i run the script again it will of course give me details and similarly you can also fetch uh, let us say the status so we'll probably go back to the same script and the status and we'll do dollar issue dot status and we can do something like uh, dot name because we want to know the name of the status so if you run this it will give you the current status which is to do and if you of course change the status to something else start progress it will of course it should <laughs> return the uh, current status which is of course uh, coming programmatically so th this is of course a very simple thing a uh, simple way of uh, working with uh, your your uh, script and again you don't have to use this file tab here if you if you if you have access to only jira web interface and you have a script runner installed maybe you are working in an organization where they have given you some kind of uh, environment to play you can also use the same script here so you can just um, remove it uh, remove the file remove any file from the file tab go to script and i'll prob probably copy the same script and uh, let us try to copy the same thing here and uh, do it one more time so if i run this it will give, give us the same thing and a good thing about this particular uh, code editor which looks different and better i'm not really sure if this will work straight away yes i think this works because earlier we used to press control space and it was uh, a bit difficult so i i think this new code editor will definitely help and it will save a lot of time i guess hopefully <laughs> and uh, and that is it that is all i wanted to talk about and share in this uh, in this video and uh, and i hope i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much bye bye